And we bring it back live to ringside for the tail of the tape between the 33-year-old Chavez and the 26-year-old Scott Walker. And you can see Walker, 6 feet 1 inches, 144 pounds. They're both 4 pounds above the weight limit because Chavez didn't want to go down to 140 for this one. And Larry Merchant, 8-inch reach advantage for Walker. I believe Chavez deliberately picked Walker. He wanted to look at a tall opponent before he went up against De La Hoya. Our punch stat numbers here, you can see some of the numbers in recent fights. They're not comparable. Chavez is much the harder puncher. And here you can see how often the opponents land. The opponents land a little bit too much on Chavez lately, but much too much on a fighter like Walker. Rules it about with cult figure Harold Letterman. The Julio Cesar Chavez Scott Walker fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. There is no title involved. There's no standing gate count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the belt in the 10th and final round only. Jim. All right, Harold, and now that Larry has given you the big buildup on his brand new favorite <laughs> fighter, Scott Walker, let's get a good look at him for the first time. The pink cat. And Larry, you talked about the unprecedented brown trunks on De La Hoya. <laughs> How many fighters have you ever seen come into the ring in a white and pink satin robe? Not a lot, but he's not like anybody I've seen lately, at least. He looks like somebody who stepped out of a Cormac McCarthy novel or somebody I've seen in a Trailways bus depot. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yesterday he came to the weigh-in gym wearing a purple suit, a black shirt, and a white tie. He wants attention, and he has it. You're going to love the haircut when you get a look. There you go. I say the haircut. I, I guess I should have said the hairstyle. The not so cut. And there's the record 21 losses, three, or 21 wins, three losses, one draw, 12 KOs. And every one of those fights, except for one, against fighters that you'd be hard pressed ever to have heard of. The one fighter you would have heard of on Walker's dossier, Alexis Arguello, but Arguello at the time that Walker decisioned him was a badly faded 42 year old. his entourage and you can see that 11 times he has fought above the weight limit and 10 times he won rather easily one of those fights was the draw against Pernell Whitaker in San Antonio just in case we didn't know who he was he put on a headband to tell us he is one of the best fighters of our time at his best coming into his own live music, which is also a first for me, George. Julio says this record is incorrect. He claims that he's had 98 fights. This will be the 99th. And the fight against De La Hoya would be the 100th. But official ring record-keeping sources, such as Fight Facts, say that they cannot locate the 98th fight in official Mexican records, that Chavez has only fought 97 times, and this will be the 98th. We hope that the dispute will be fully sorted out before June 7th. Well, I can believe it's Chavez, because the other group gave me an extra year or two. <laughs> A lot of people lying about your age. <laughs> you, of course, are not one of them. Yeah, believe the fighter. He's Happy man. birthday, incidentally. George just had a birthday on uh, January 10th. That's right. 47 years old. I didn't tell you to say that. <laughs> well, I know how old you are because okay. you're the same age as me. Oh, okay. I oh, refer that's to whatever. That's you know, I'm, I'm entitled because I'm the same age as you. <laughs> Chavez is only 33. Wow, baby. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here at Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated and Don King Productions, in association with your undisputed, undefeated, King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Present part two of the Double Rumble.
This belt once again is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Your officials in attendance at ringside shall remain the same, except for the three judges and the referee. The three judges scoring the bout on a 10-point must system will be Dwayne Ford, Bill Graham, and Al Siciliano. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, from the site where legends are made, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Ten rounds of boxing in the junior welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing hot pink with white trim and weighing in at 144 pounds. He comes to us from Tempe, Arizona and brings an excellent professional record of 21 victories. 12 KOs to his credit with three defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Pink Cat, Scott Walker. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing blue, trimmed with gold, and weighing in also at 144 pounds. His professional record, a most outstanding one. 96 victories, 78 KOs to his credit. Only one defeat and one draw. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, con Culiacán, Mexico, presenting the three-time world champion and current WBC junior welterweight champion of the world Julio Cesar Chavez. You got, you got the mouthpiece? All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. There will be that regular Camerino. I want a good, clean fight. Now listen, these here trunks here, they're very high. Okay, down here, you got five inches. All right? So here, these punches are still good. Give me a clean fight, shake hands. It will be interesting to watch Chavez chase down a kid who moves very well and in fact knows how to fight, just doesn't have any real strength. be interesting to see if Chavez can still cut off the ring like he used to and if he does that's our man <laughs> Walker made no bones about his intention to stay away and create space in the ring so as George Foreman points out the onus will be on Chavez to cut off the ring there was a time in his career when he was the absolute master of that technique but it takes energy and commitment George to do it takes a lot of energy and a lot a lot of times just when you think you got him you leave yourself open because your feet are not where they're supposed to be so cutting the ring off and being in position is the mo is the magic to this Walker trying to start out with the jab can be useful for him in helping to create that space between himself and Chavez Walker will move to his left and to his right and even though he's starting here with the jab, as Larry Merchant has pointed out earlier, he's very unorthodox and will occasionally throw a lead left hook. An unusual choice of punches and potentially disastrous against a body puncher like Chavez. Well, Chavez is awful smart. When you're cutting the ring off, you got to make sure when the guy's going left, he touches the rope. Right, his body touches the rope. You don't want to make him have air in between you. Make sure his body touches the rope each time he goes left and right. Chavez managed only get to get off one punch in the first minute of the fight. Get him out of there. Come on. It's going to take him a while to try to bring Walker down off of his toes and make him a stationary target. Body punching, the best way to do it if he can get close. Crowd chanting for Julio.
Chavez trying to see now if if his opponent will follow him when he backs up. You don't often see Chavez going backwards. He doesn't want to make that mistake with a young fighter like this. You give him a little courage, back away. The next thing you know, you got yourself a fight on your hand. You want him to maintain his fear. One of Walker's cornermen said to us yesterday, we won't allow a fight to break out in this boxing match. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Float like a butterfly, sting like a hornet? <laughs> So far, the most effective blow has been Walker's occasional left jab. Chavez landing a looping right on the shoulder of Walker there. Just missed with the left hook. Every Walker hair still in place as round one winds down toward the close. This is not an unusual way for Chavez to start a fight. Never been a fast starter. Well, when I've all fought taller guys... I miss punches over their head to make them start bobbing and weaving down into my territory. Mm. You miss purposely. Clever idea. And in Chavez's corner, again, our interpreter is Hector Garcia. You have to be a little more active. Move your, move your hips from side to side. And don't wait. And throw punches. Don't stay on top of him and don't give him any distance. You're doing very good. With that jab, but you got to throw it a little bit more. Okay, when he's standing back on the outside, feigning. Don't use the jab till he steps forward. When he steps forward, time him with that jab. Put it on him. And if you could hit him with it a second time, double up on it. Okay. If you jab more, he'll start to bob up under into left hooks and straight right uh, uppercut. Keep the jab on. The most impressive thing I thought about Walker in that round, George, was how composed he seemed. That's a hard thing to be in with a great fighter like Chavez. Come on, I'll be holding, I'll be holding, I'll be holding. Let's go, come on, come on. Of course, Walker would say, well, he's no greater than Arguello. I got past my butterflies in that fight, but Arguello was 42. Chavez much closer to his prime than was Alexis. It, and he was frank enough to say, I'm glad I wasn't fighting Chavez five years ago. The, the thing that's bad about this fight is Chavez does not just want to go out and win tonight. Oscar's had this devastating knockout. He wants a knockout. Give up, give up, give up. Well, he's going to have to risk something eventually to do that. He only threw 14 punches in round one. You're right risk and that's something he doesn't want to do tonight is take any risk yeah but george this kid doesn't look like him like he can crack an egg and i and and chavez is certainly more than an egg maybe he can't crack an egg but he can connect yep that he can do he's get showing that get him out, get the first minute of round out. two Chavez right. gets in a couple of body punches and walker lost his concentration there for a moment just wanted to say any cat can scratch <laughs> Even a pink one? Even a pink cat can scratch. Hey, I got a curiosity question, George. You say when you fought taller fighters, you missed punches over their heads? Yeah, Who'd I would fight make it was sure. taller than you? Who did you fight it was taller? It happened a lot. Jack O'Halloran. Chavez got to Walker with a body punch, and now Julio trying to finish it up. And Walker wobbles. His legs are gone. Chavez hoping to match De La Hoya's second round knockout. A sneak right hand, I believe, right, started on, get, get it, Jim. Inside. All right. Let's right. 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 we'll see if he can retain his composure stiff. in the face of this. Well, his legs are still stiff, Larry. All right, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Composure is one thing. He's got to get his legs back under him. 52 seconds. Plenty of time left on the round if Chavez can find his way back in. Hard right hand to the head. Walker in trouble against the ropes. Joe Cortez looking on. This is what Chavez know how to do. Gets you hurt, start chopping, never stop punching. Chavez able to land that right uppercut as they broke. I want to tell the kid to take an eight. Get down on one knee, kid. He's trying to fight back instead, and that could be the wrong choice. And Joe Cortez stops the fight. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right, that's it. All right, let's take him out.
So Chavez matches De La Hoya. See ya and maybe raise you. Well, we'll find out who's able to raise on June 7th. not often you get a chance to see two good fighters on one card like that. Two good fighters. Timekeeper hands me a note on Chavez. Scott Walker says this was a poodle versus a pit bull. How are you doing, buddy? All right, you come back in the buddy. So an easy knockout victory for Julio Cesar Chavez, who accepts the congratulations of Scott Walker. And believe me, this is a relief to Julio. He knew as well as anyone that he was in against a guy who might try to stay away and could conceivably stretch him out for a number of rounds. But George, he got to him right here. There's no doubt about him. He got him just a little low there, trying to get in a shot himself. And he got him with that right hand. He never recovered. That sneak right hand over the top set the stage for all of this punishment which followed. And from this point on, Walker never really had his legs under him again. Not at all. And Chavez, this is what he does better than anyone else in the business. It's chop, 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 like a fellow with a, a hatchet. Continuously doing what he knows how to do. And now the end of the fight. As you see De La Ho or Chavez, I should say, pounding Walker down to the canvas. And referee Joe Cortez stepping in to say no count necessary here. I've seen enough. Walker shouldn't be disappointed. This is just one better than good fighter than Chavez. He's, he's just not your ordinary boxer. No, he's an all-time great. And right now, let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Stops this bout. The official time, 2 minutes, 45 seconds of round number 2. The winner, who now, on June 7th, will get ready to rumble for World War III as he takes on De La Hoya, ladies and gentlemen. El Gran Campeón Mexicano, still the WBC Junior Welterweight Champion of the World, Julio Cesar Chavez. Final punch stat numbers, and after an extremely cautious first round in which he threw only 14 punches, Chavez came back to throw 65 punches in part of the second round, and he landed 41 of those 65. So Walker was subject to a hail of Chavez punishment as the second round progressed. And let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring with Julio. All right, congratulations, Julio. Tell us, were you trying to duplicate or beat what De La Hoya did in the first fight? No, de ninguna manera yo salí a hacer mi pelea como lo hago siempre. Bendito sea Dios, el muchacho era muy inexperto para mí. No, I, uh, I went out to do the, my fight like I always do, and he's just very good too. Did you see that fight? And if you did, what were your impressions of De La Hoya's fight? Si viste la pelea, ¿cuáles son tus impresiones de Oscar De La Hoya? Eh, como lo he venido repitiendo, un peleador fuerte, rápido. Que pega fuerte, pero no es lo mismo ver en tanto que Julio Cesar Chávez. Like I always said in the past, he's, uh, he's very fast, and he's very good, and he's very strong. Were you surprised by his body attack? ¿Estaba sorprendido tú por el, los ataques al cuerpo que él estuvo haciendo? No, de ninguna manera. No, de, no, 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 no. You think you two guys are going to just stand there and trade body punches when you meet? ¿Tú crees que van a estar los dos ahí parados y en, intercambiar puños cuando se encuentren? Yo espero que él se pare y cambie golpes conmigo. Yes, definitely. That's, uh, that's going to be the way he's going to go. You seem very calm and collected during this fight, but we know that you weren't even feeling well last week. Did you feel an urgency to end it as soon as possible? Estabas bien, bien calmado en esta pelea y sabemos que tú estabas enfermo la semana pasada. ¿Cómo sí, te estuve, afectó? Estuve un poco enfermo, pero... Pero gracias a Dios venía con una mentalidad de que esta pelea no la podía perder porque venía la pelea grande con Oscar de la Hoya, así que apresuré el paso y gracias a Dios no que. Yes, I, I know I was a little sick, but uh, I know I had to win this fight because I had to demonstrate that I can beat Oscar de la Hoya. 
Last week, we saw a great veteran fighter, Kennedy McKinney, pull everything together to show how great he had been as a young fighter. Do you feel you can do that for the fight in June? La semana pasada vimos a Kenny McKinney pelear. ¿Tú crees que tú puedes hacer como, como él hizo? <laughs> Never. No, quiero mandar un saludo para, para los tomateros de Culiacán, campeones. Mañana ya nos vemos en Culiacán. Un saludo para, para mis hijos, un beso para mis hijos, para mis padres, Hello to para my mi esposa, Malia. Uh, I don't know, did he understand the question? I mean, how hard does he feel he will have to prepare for Delaware? Will he be inspired to be the absolute best he can be? Si tú entiendes de qué manera te tienes que prepararte para pelear con Oscar de la Hoya. Yo, yo, sé, yo, yo sé lo que tengo que hacer, dile. soy un hombre de mucha experiencia, tengo 99 peleas, he peleado con, con verdaderos peleadores y Oscar de la Hoya lo respeto, es buen muchacho, pero no le tengo ningún miedo y ningún, y ningún respeto arriba de mí. I know how I have to prepare myself, I, I have a lot of experience and I know, I, I know exactly how I have to prepare, I'm not afraid of him and uh, we'll show it. Soy un peleador que está impuesto a recibir muchos golpes y los he asimilado. I can, I can take a punch. Ahora and, ya, ya veremos si, si Oscar... We'll... Aguanta el, el tren de pelea mío. I, I like to see if Oscar de la Hoya is gonna uh, is gonna be able to hold my punches. So are you are you saying that? Y el golpeo mío. Are you saying that he hasn't fought anybody as tough as you who can take a punch as well as you, and that will be the big difference in the fight? ¿Tú crees que es que él no ha peleado con nadie tan fuerte como tú? No, sí, ha peleado con buenos peleadores. Yes, he has. Pero yo creo que no ha peleado con ninguno mejor que yo. No, he has never fought anybody as good as me. We hope to see that fight in June. Esperamos ver esa pelea en junio. Yes, very good. <laughs> All right, Jim, back to you. All right, thanks very much, Larry Merchant. Uh, so both Oscar De La Hoya and Julio Cesar Chavez score second-round knockouts tonight against relatively weak opposition. That's no huge surprise. Let's face it, everyone's business interest, ours included, ran toward the expectation that Chavez and De La Hoya would win tonight and meet each other on June 7. Now, about that interview with Chavez, what struck you, George? <laughs> that I, I believe that uh, Chavez can speak a lot better Eng English than he makes out to be. And not only that, he used the word afraid in his uh, conversation. He never should have done that. Once a great fighter uses that word afraid, he said, I'm not afraid of Oscar. That tells me something right there. So that tells you that he feels as though he needs to defend the point that he's not afraid of De La Hoya. He's expecting people to think that he might be. And Basically, after what De La Hoya did with body punching in the first fight, it's not an unintelligent point of view, right? And I would be afraid. <laughs> really? I would. Well, you it was see. an interesting statement. I mean, De La Hoya Makes comes a better out. Fighter, though. When you're afraid of a fighter, you can put up a better fight. Chavez is the legendary body puncher. De La Hoya comes in and provides a savage display of body punching. De La Hoya has been knocking people out with punches to the head. Chavez comes in and does that. Kind of an interesting turnabout, isn't it? Oh, it's just beautiful, isn't it? It's very exciting as we look forward to June 7. And incidentally, if you have a bunch of Julio Cesar Chavez money burning in your pocket, you may want to get it out right now because I've been given word that the line for Chavez De La Hoya will open at the Caesar Sportsbook at 3 to 1 De La Hoya. 3 to 1 De La Hoya, the opening line for June 7. I think there'll be a lot of Chavez betters going into the sports book to get their money down tonight. Well, I'm telling you this. For the first time in a long time, you're going to see two great, I mean, super great fighters mashed up together. I got to be there. Well, I think you probably will be, George. Let's go back up to Larry Merchant's on the ring. All right, I'm with Scott Worker. Scott, it didn't work out as you had hoped, I'm sure. This is a night you've been, in a sense, planning for all your life. What are your thoughts? Been planning for it for about 18 years. Um, you know, he did... <coughs> excuse me. He did hit me there in the first round, and uh, he stunned me, and he hit me again, and I knew that I wasn't going to be able to get away from him. And I went down on my own to take an eight count. I didn't think that he would stop the fight. You know, I just I thought I was taking an eight count. Can you get any solace out of the fact that you did win the first round from the great fighter you fought? I, I should have won about uh, ten rounds like that <laughs> uh, if, you know... I don't know. You know, I, I want to say something. I want to say to everybody out there that's uh, watching this taped or watching it now, um, all my fans, and I know there was a lot of people that came up here for me and a lot of people they couldn't make it that wanted to. I, my fans, are that is the reason I do it. I live for my fans. I live for the crowd. And uh, I could not, I swear to God, I promise you, I could not be here without 
you guys, and I'm sorry that this had to work out this way, but... <laughs> Thank you very much. You gave it your best shot. Yeah, it was okay. Okay, Jim.